Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be working with you today with one of the MIP shaders which is called the MIP Gray Ball. The benefit of having this shader, it can be used in two ways. One, it can be used as an environment so it can eliminate the scene with this color information the same way that we used the MIP uh, mirror ball before in our previous tutorial. But this time, the shader can be used either in an environment or as an actual shader to eliminate or actually to color the surface. It looks up based on this direction of the surface normal and it will map that and retrieve it as a color information. Let me show you what I mean. I'll do the environment uh, because it's very simple first. I'm going to select the camera under the Mentor Ray environment shader, grab the mirror ball and again it sits under the environment and it's a matter of just locating a file texture. From the name uh, you can guess it's a sphere or a colored sphere. And the name it says gray so I'm just going to use the default gray. I have a bunch of spheres that I already pre-rendered. I can just uh, grab one of them here and render the scene. Now we have that ball here in the background but it didn't eliminate it simply because we need to enable final gather. Partial render and here we go what you're thinking is okay so it's just a, a big IBL node kinda and eliminating the scene with it yes however you can work with it in multiple ways that you can actually add the shader now and this becomes interesting let's uh, sorry disable the MIP on the camera so now we're back to normal and we're gonna assign a new material here on this and I'm gonna put an MIP ambient occlusion it's gonna be under the texture there you go rather than having a bright white I'm gonna put the gray ball actually let's use the one that we already have increase the samples a little bit and assign it to the ground as well as you can see now the render is done and we have uh, the gray ball which is pretty much projected not really on the surface but give you an idea how to eliminate how the scene will be eliminated with that sphere so it can be used when you are in a, a scenario that you're doing a live shot and you want to take just the coloring information around that area with the gray or you can do it also with the mirror ball it just give you a rough idea how the elimination gonna be around the scene however we can use this a little bit different especially in conjunction with applications such as Mudbox that has lit sphere materials which is basically the same idea a bunch of rendered spheres that can be used to eliminate a surface which is a fake elimination so let me show you what I mean by that as I have in my blog the uh, mud under the mudbox let sphere library a bunch of rendered spheres that can give you a different look for example bronze uh, I was doing clay avant or chrome or what have you all these images are being lit by a, s a simple sphere that can be rendered from any application Maya, Mudbox, Max, whatever it is all you have to do is just render it as a sphere and of course you can download my library from here down at the bottom again they're all rendered images such as this the idea is that you want to have the edge of the sphere right at the edge of the cropped image you can also refer to my training material about the spheres in Mudbox, I explained it in details how is that being projected and what does the camera see. So I'm going to use one of these to be my surface elimination. So I'm just going to assign new materials. And from the material attribute that I just added here, I'm going to add and the environment, my MIP gray ball. And I'm going to come back here to explain different attributes that we have, but as simple as choosing, let's get the bronze because it's very uh, obvious. And you can see here, it matches exactly my bronze image so it's very simple very quick and if you're wondering what will happen if you assign displacement the 
it will still work. So I'm just going to put a simple displacement here, some fractal. You see here it's respecting it and it will render correctly. However, there is one thing that you need to be aware of. So let me just go back to my SG node and break that. Uh, actually, I'm going to disable final gather as well because we don't actually need it. Uh, let me show you here one more time render. So this time there's no displacement and no final gather. Let me keep this image and I'm going to rotate my camera this way. If this was a true reflection, this will change. But if you notice, the highlight's still underneath, the highlight's still underneath. So this is a camera thing. It's not going to change the reflection on that surface. It, no matter where you're going to look, you're always going to get that quote-unquote projection of that, surface, of that sphere on your object. So if I bring an, uh, an object rather than a sphere and assign the material on it, quick render, you will see now the projection again, quote unquote, of that projection of that sphere is going to follow the surface normals. And of course you can apply other materials or in this case, other images to give you a different look. So here now I'm trying to bend the normals or get a bent normal render with a symbol render of a sphere rather than doing an MIB empty occlusion, for example. You can of course also add it in the ambient color. Just making sure that I have the correct one. Now you have more predominant effect here, rather than with just a multiplier of the texture on the, on the color as well. So your options now are endless. You can just do anything according to your library of rendered spheres. Being said, now you can add, uh, for example, Sun and Sky System, that by default enable Final Gather. And if I render this, the shader is still being rendered even though that we have a totally different environment which still respects it and of course you'll see the difference of color and that's because of the MIA exposure node that sits on the uh, camera and of course uh, we know how to fix that, that and if it was a texture file that when you go to add the gamma correction node and do the 0.45 but this is way easier we do it here simply because you have a D gamma value that can be added to match the MIA exposure node so if I render this guy again, just a little bit of him, you see now we retrieved the same color information that we had before. The multiplier is a simple multiplication of the value of the color information that sits on the texture file. That's a sphere that we're using to eliminate. So for example, if I increase this by value of 2, and I will render, all these color information will increase that sits in here can see now they're almost more intense. Um, let me get back to one. The blur value, if you're having the sphere, for example, just a, a perfect sphere and at the edge of the sphere, you can still see the edge of the rendered image that we're using. You can increase the multiplier here to smoothen that rough edges. I'm not quite sure if this will capture it, but I'm hoping the um, recording will show the difference. So here you have it. We lost some of the definitions in the highlight because it blurred all the colors. Just let you know, uh, this is an expensive attribute. As you can see here, my render time jumped to three minutes just in this little region. So be aware of that. It will increase your render time if you start playing with it. So now all you have to do is just render a bunch of spheres from your favorite application. Doesn't matter what it is. Just render a sphere, crop it to the edge, and use it in your gray ball. I already have a bunch of them available for you for download if you wish. Just scroll down to the bottom and you can download them from here. I hope you guys enjoyed this session and I'm looking forward to talk to you more.